I'm here with Anna Dixon and Franz Turgeon from the Square Dance Foundation. Welcome in. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much, you. Brian. Now, if we could just start, uh, you know, from from my own personal interest, I, you know, what's the organization, all, the foundation, all about? Well, the foundation is a research library and a museum that features treasures one of a kind up at the Wombeck Mill, which is a historical mill in Manchester, New Hampshire. But the headquarters are here on Woburn Street at my house. And the reason for that is we are an all-volunteer organization experiencing 42 years of people giving their time and dedication to preserving, promoting, and perpetuating square dance. So I would love to talk to anybody about this, and the name Anna Dixon is in the telephone book. You're free to call anytime. <laughs> We'd love to give you information. Up at our museum, we have one-of-a-kind artifacts. Um, at right now, we are in partnership with the UNH in Durham, New Hampshire. So we have given them over 800 books on Western square dancing that they did have, didn't have any idea existed. But now they have the premier collection of all square dance vital records from the traditional, which is sometimes known as, as the Eastern, and now our modern Western. They have round dancing, of which France is a round dance teacher. <laughs> And I should say line dance, line dance. not round dance, but line dance. And she can tell you about what she does on that. But we are always available for people to come visit. But first of all, they have to go on sdfne.org. And I'll say that again, sdfne.org. And they can request an appointment. So whatever day you want, whatever time you want, someone can show you around. And we hope you will come and visit. Great. Now, how... How did you get involved in the foundation? Uh, my husband is a square dance caller, and for 22 years here in Reading, he taught all of the Girl Scout troops to square dance, and also uh, the Knights of Columbus had their youth group, and they d took lessons as well. He's done it for all the churches in Reading that wanted to have a fun square dance evening. And so with him being involved so much, the next thing they knew, they needed a president. And being sort of funny at the time, because I had my own company, which was a fashion business, uh, I said to him, are you ready for a woman president? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, we'll let you know. So I figured, OK, then they, d they don't want me. And next thing I knew, two weeks later, I got a call. And they say, if you are willing to accept, we would love to have you be president. Well, I am now in my 20th year wow. of elected presidentship. So, and we do represent the whole states, the New England states, all six states, and we have over 700 members. So it's quite an election. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and Franz, how about you? How did you start to get involved? Well, I started square dancing in 2002. And um, then I started going to the Mill Around, which is in Manchester, and that's where the museum is. And I met Anna, actually, at a convention that was held in Sturbridge in 2003. Yeah. She was the fashion um, coordinator. coordinator. And I just love the dresses. And I went to Anna, and I said, gee, you know, what do we do to be able to model? And so she told me to get in touch with her. And then eventually. And then she was my model ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and then she asked me to be um, treasurer for the foundation, and I've been with you since 2005. That's right. Yeah, and I'm very happy. It's it's an awesome uh, organization. That's yeah. great. Square Dance people are so giving, so thoughtful, that when you do something like this, you just have that wonderful feeling, and it's true. That's why That's she stayed great. so long. <laughs> she gets a wonderful feeling. I do, too. I love all the people I come in contact yeah. with. Now, Franz, you, met, you mentioned uh, that you fell in love with kind of the dress uh, yeah. with square dancing. And, and, and you, know, you brought along with you a, a display board here uh, that, that features a lot, of the, um, a lot of the common dress. If you could yes. talk about what we have here. Okay, well, up, up here we have the beginnings of what costumes started out. But way back in the very beginning, it was long ball gowns and the men wore tucks. And that was when Henry... Henry Ford. Ford and his wife started to revive the square dancing. So they made it a very special elite type of a thing. But then from there, yeah. other people wanted to do it. So then they started coming in jeans and shirts and sure. whatever. Yeah. You know, your, your Sunday best is what people were doing. 
So this shows that over the years it has evolved in all kinds of patterns and all kinds of fabrication. In the beginning it took an hour just to press a simple skirt. Now you throw it in the wash of the dryer and it comes out, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a plus if people, you know, want it. But you do not have to have costumes nowadays to square dance. As a matter of fact, a lot of people just go to the regular store, they buy prairie skirts and off they go. And, and, and you are in... Uh, this is Tonight, the convention. This is... this is the Square Dance Foundation's costume, and it has all six states yeah. that you represent as their president. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Now, and 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 Franz, you had mentioned um, that the uh, the convention is where you kind of first got into it and met Anna. Um, but I understand there's a convention that's coming up back in the in the Bay State uh, in Springfield, correct? Right. In June, it's the national convention, and this. Um, organization they have a convention every year in different parts of the country and this year they're expecting up to 6,000 but they've had up to 12,000 20,000 at one time and it's a great uh, it's a four-day event it's June 24th to the 27th uh, no 23rd to the 27th and um, it's great and There's they have so much callers, too, from all over the country Correct. that come to this. So it's not just New England callers. It's going to be New England and all the different states' callers who have been invited to come. So it's a wonderful experience to dance to a voice that you've never heard before using figures that you probably aren't familiar with because each region has its own type of things that they like to do. Sure. Yeah. No. Now explain a little bit, I'm, you know, just out of personal interest, Explain to me this collar. For me and the viewers, oh, okay. what, is that, what is that concept? Okay, the square dance collar can be a woman or a man, and they study to do this. They just don't get up and get a mic and start to call. So they have to learn all the different formations, and once they get that down, they can mix and match to do many figures. And that's why Franz said before, it's a wonderful mental activity for people because you have to react the minute you hear what's being said. And for a lot of people, they don't like to listen, as we all know. Sure. So if they don't listen, then they will goof up. And then what you do in square dancing, if you goof up and the whole square breaks down, the person that goofs laughs. And you do have to laugh because it would be a sad thing if you don't. And everybody else laughs with you. So it makes it a happy evening. You forget all your troubles at work. You forget all your troubles with the kids. And it's just an enjoyable way. So the caller makes it that way. We have some that are real showmen. You have others that are very laid back. The voices do not have to be spectacular. Some are, some aren't. And it's just, yeah. it's a whole new area out there that people have no idea exists. And I am so glad that you are doing this. I want to thank you for bringing this, all the organizations in Reading here, to come and tell people what is available, make them more aware of what's out there. And I invite everybody, everybody here, you should come and try a square dance. So if there's, if there's people out there who are looking to, to get into square dancing, mm -hmm. how would they go about doing that? Well, they can go on our website at sdfne.org, or they can call Anna. Mm -hmm. And can I give your phone number? Sure. 781-944-4416. And um, we'll be glad to, you know, point you in the right direction because there are clubs everywhere, so you don't have to be in Reading. Uh, right, there used to be a club in Reading. Yeah, we did have a club in Reading about 40 years, and then that caller passed away and there wasn't anybody else that could take over. Because callers, they don't have a huge amount of them. So what happens is clubs fold because they don't have a caller. But we have a lot of new young people that are learning how to do this. So I expect before you know it, things will be bustling again. And in your own town, you should have your own square dance club. <laughs> well, there you go. There's the call to action there from Anna.